rotor dynamics is very important subject but at the same time it is a difficult subject so i have tried to make videos of various parts so that this can be understood easily the basic of uh, rotor dynamics includes the awareness about the lateral vibration critical speed torsional vibration and disc frequency vibration so let's discuss about the basics of rotor dynamics if you look at this picture this is a turbo expander wheel photograph which has failed just one year operation and uh, it has been noticed that although rotor dynamics was conducted analysis was done but the separation margin that was not maintained as it was required second photograph says that this compressor impeller has failed just after 3 months of operation and it the analysis was again done for this com compressor wheel but it was overlooked about the separation margin in fact there was no separation margin between the critical speed and uh, that is nothing critical we can say disk frequency and disk natural frequency and uh, what is called exciting frequency and that is why it has failed if you look at this uh, bridge in long back 1940 this bridge collapsed after 4 months of operation in fact people started thinking about rotor dynamics after this failures so in addition to this other observation i can tell you if compressor is just started our ramp up until the full speed you will see the vibration during the start up and it is why uh, vibration trip multiplier is used for safe start up in addition to this sometimes no dwell zone occurs during the machine operation and it is advisable not to operate the machine near the surge or near the critical speed otherwise uh, there could be potential damage to the machine so with this all photographs and discussion it is now evident that the rotor dynamics is required to analyzed for a safe operation of the machine now what is a rotor dynamics i can tell you when rotor is designed for particular flow and pressure but the rotor also requires to be analyzed for you know rotor dynamics point of view for safe operation of the machine if rotor is not properly analyzed just we have seen there could be potential that rotor can damage in operation so the main focus point is analysis part of the rotor after the design so that rotor is safe for operation so now rotor dynamics has divided into broadly three categories one is called lateral natural frequency analysis where critical speeds are discussed machine should not run near the critical speed otherwise dissonance can occur and in this case also we'll to see the undamped and damped correct uh, category similarly for the rotor is consider rigid bearing support and flexible bearing supports so all this comes under lateral natural frequency analysis the next is a torsional natural frequency analysis where twisting motion of you know rotor or disc is called the torsional frequency so rotor is also analyzed for you know torsional frequency there should be separation margin between the torsional natural frequency and the exciting frequency to avoid the resonance and the last is the disc frequency analysis where rotor is analyzed for the disc frequencies now lateral natural frequency analysis 
or what is lateral the displacement occurs this is a shaft or rotor Sh shaft mass is attached at center two bearings at the end both end so movement of you know shaft perpendicular to the direction of length is called lateral so analysis of shaft in this direction is called lateral natural frequency analysis as i said analysis is categorized in two groups when bearing is considered rigid when bearing is rigid there is no displacement of shaft at bearing both in at the same time there is no displacement of bearing itself so this is this is called the rigid bearing when the bearing is considered flexible then there is a displacement of shaft at bearing at the same time there is a displacement of bearing itself how you bearing rigid bearing there will be displacement at the shaft other than bearing supports in addition to this we have to you know consider undamped condition damped condition so in all together there are four categories undamped rotor on rigid bearing support damped rotor on rigid bearing support undamped rotor on flexible bearing support and damped rotor on flexible bearing support so all these four category will be discussed in detail in next videos lateral natural frequency is normally expressed as a critical speed how what is then critical speed when the lateral natural frequency is equal to the operating speed there will be resonance and the corresponding speed is called the critical speed to understand more if the critical speed of rotor let's say is 12000 rpm that means lateral natural frequency of rotor is 12000 cycle per minute because unit of rpm and rcpm is same to get the you know this unit cycle per second or that is hertz divided by 60 that means frequency in hertz will be 12000 divided by 60 which is 200 hertz you can say if rotor has a critical speed of 12000 rpm that means its lateral natural frequency is 200 hertz these are the typical this is typical mode shape of critical speed this is the first critical speed of a shaft where you see there is no displacement at these two bearings x axis is a length of the shaft y axis is a displacement so at the center you see the displacement is a maximum at the bearing there is no displacement because bearing is considered rigid bearing support and the first critical speed let's say in particular case is a 995 rpm this is a second critical speed mode shape where almost at center if it is equally is zero displacement zero and both in there is a displacement of the shaft but if you look at the critical speed of the second is 23873 rpm which is more than the first critical speed but displacement amplitude will be lower than the first one similarly the third critical speed the mode state will be like this along the length length of the shaft and third critical speed is the highest one among first second and third which is 37433 rpm certainly is more than first and second critical speed but amplitude will be lower so we can say this is a particular typical value shape is a typical and it is taken from one one of example of the shaft but the critical speed value will change based on change of the shaft configuration then how the lateral natural frequency analysis is done the first of all we need to maintain the separation or gap between the natural frequency 
an exciting feature that is a critical speed and the exciting speed operation operation speed or operating speed the first action will be you have to find out the lateral natural frequency second you have to find out the exciting frequency which is called four frequency in shaft normally the speed of the shaft is considered exciting frequency and natural frequency of the shaft is called the critical speed so if both are same that means this is called resonance and you have to ensure the separation between the natural frequency and the exciting frequency that is critical speed and operating speed typical the value of separation is 15% for safe operation so it is analyzed and showed that the critical speed and the operating speed the separation should be 15% so that there should not be resonance this is one way or one of the criteria for analysis the second criteria is a stability check ensure the rotor damping is sufficient to have log decrement because of damping you know the amplitude starts decreasing and this value is given which is should be 0.3 should be above the 0.3 this will ensure that the amplitude of critical speeds starts decreasing drastically and rotor is stable unbalanced response plot the plots this is third third criteria the plots are made on the speed versus amplitude at bearings and probes area location if the peaks are observed at the plot indicating critical speed or higher amplitude at or near the operating speed range then rotor balancing is recommended or bearings are analyzed to reduce the amplitude to acceptable level so these are three criteria where lateral natural frequency analysis is done the first will be separation for critical speed and operating speed second is stability and third is unbalanced response plot now the second section is called torsional natural frequency so twisting alternating motion of shaft is called torsional natural frequency certainly for to have torsional natural frequency you should have minimum two disc or you should have one disc and another end should be fixed so these are the minimum criteria for torsion because it is a disc who can produce the natural torsion natural frequency so minimum two disc are required which should be attached at both end to have torsion natural frequency if shaft is fixed at one end with then at least one disc is required to attach to another end which uh, that will cause the natural frequency torsion natural frequency that means we can see that if shaft is a fix at one end then total number of natural frequency will be number of disc attached if it is one then one if it's two is two if shaft is pre at both end that means then if two disc is attached there will be one natural frequency if n number of disc are attached that means n minus 1 number of natural frequencies are available these are the typical mode shape for this is length of the shaft on x axis and angle of twist or you can say this is a displacement of angle so in case of two disc system you see one is plus one end is you can say plus another is a minus side so this is twisting in the next turn this will comes bottom and this will go up so this is the twisting of the shaft for two disc system this is one end is fixed so there is no displacement so at one free end you have displacement of this next turn this will go down so this way it will be rotated because another end is fixed so this is the typical you know mode shape of torsion natural frequency now analysis for torsion natural frequency you first of all you have to find out torsion natural frequency then next find out the force frequency then you have to maintain the separation between the torsion natural frequency and force frequency and separation should be minimum 10% to have a safe operation now disc frequency 
this natural frequency uh, disk frequency you know disk vibrates in certain frequencies called the disk frequency and it depends on nodal diameter and nodal circles so you know disk frequency is combination of nodal diameter and nodal circuit so then what are nodal diameter and nodal circuit so word nodal comes from the word node which means there is no displacement of that point this implies for the diameter nodal diameter means the diameter where there is no displacement similarly this applies for nodal circuit that means if it is a nodal diameter and disk vibrates that means suppose this is a going up and this is going down but there is no movement of at this disk or this diameter next time this will be going down this will be going up but there is no displacement of the shaft or sorry no displacement at this you know diameter and that is that is why it is called nodal diameter similarly for the nodal circle this is in nodal circuit that means if inside is going up and outside is going down still there is no displacement at this circle which is called the nodal circle some more this is one diameter nodal circuit this is two diameter sorry this is one diameter nodal this is two nodal diameter this is plus minus plus minus so this quadrant will vibrate but there is no displacement on this diameter and this diameter similarly two nodal diameter plus one nodal circle so disk will vibrate considering there is no displacement on disk sorry on displacement on the diameter these two diameter and no displacement on the circle that means this area will vibrate this 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 will vibrate similarly this will vibrate and this will vibrate however there is no displacement on these two diameter as well as these circle and that is called nodal diameter and nodal circle separation between you know the non disk natural frequency analysis separation between natural frequency and exciting frequency so find out the disk natural frequency then finding the exciting frequency and ensure that separation between the natural frequency and exciting frequency typically this is 10% is allowable to have a safe operation of machine now some rotor dynamics you know terminology frequency what is frequency a re frequency is defined as a repeat per second and it can be lateral means repeat can be lateral can be torsional or any other direction and one repeat is one cycle so repeat per second is called the cycle per second that unit is hertz but it is uh, it is not uh, unit can also but but its unit can be also expressed in angular form okay so repeat can be also converted into angular form like this is a lateral direction movement this is a circular motion movement of rotor from center position into lateral direction can be represented in circular motion this motion can be expressed like this okay say one repeat is equal to 2 pi so to convert hertz to radian per second just multiply with 2 pi because in one revolution it will cover 2 pi so let's say a shaft has lateral frequency of 10 repeat per second the frequency will be sorry frequency in hertz will be 10 hertz and but in angular form 10 into 2 pi that is 20 hertz a uh, 20 pi radian per second to convert hertz in cycle per minute multiply with 60 degree sorry multiply with 60 so frequency in cycle per minute that is cpm 10 into 60 is 600 cpm so if you want to convert hertz into radian just multi multiply 2 pi if you convert hertz into cpm just multiply 60 so there is a relationship between hertz to radian and hertz to cpm revolution per second revolution per second is 
expressed in angular form also one revolution is 2 pi so to convert revolution per second to radian per second just multiply with 2 pi so let's sharp has a revolution of 10 revolution per second so frequency will be 10 hertz so angular form it can be 10 into 2 pi that is 20 pi radian per second to convert hertz in that hertz in revolution per minute rpm multiply by 60 so frequency in rpm will be 10 into 60 the 600 rpm so there is a relations between revolution per second to radian that is you have to multiply 2 pi also if it is a rps or revolution per second if you want to convert into revolution per minute just multiply it 60 it will be give revolution per minute natural frequency as it is inherent property that depends on the rotor structures and the MOC and it is calculated when external force is set to zero exciting frequency frequency external frequency like a speed of rotor inlet guide vane frequency will blade frequency diffuser guide vane frequency these are considered exciting frequency resonance when natural frequency is equal to exciting frequency resonance occurs which is detrimental to rotor and so there should now there should be sufficient separation between the exciting frequency and natural frequency flexible rotor when rotor is supported by rigid bearing and there is no movement of rotor as well as bearing at bearing location so rotor is called flexible rigid rotor when rotor is supported by flexible bearing support and there is some movement or displacement of rotor as well as bearing at bearing location and so rotor is called rigid rotor so this is the now forward uh, lateral natural frequency if spinning of shaft is the same direction as the whirling direction of the shaft the natural frequency is called the forward natural frequency only forward lateral natural frequency is called critical speed see this is the whirling of the shaft this is spinning of shaft both are in the same direction backward lateral natural frequency if the spinning of shaft is opposite direction as the whirling direction of the shaft the natural frequency is called the backward natural frequency this see the photograph the spinning of shaft is opposite to the whirling of shaft and that is called backward lateral natural frequency so thank you very much hope you have enjoyed the video about the basics of rotor dynamics where we have discussed briefly about lateral natural frequency that is critical speeds then torsional natural frequency and disk frequency so thank you thank you for watching